In this tutorial, we will learn how to write data from R. And specifically, we'll learn how to write a data frame object from R to a .csv file that can be read or opened in Microsoft Excel. In addition, we will learn how to write a table object into a .csv file, and this will be saved into a folder and can be open in Microsoft Excel as well. Okay, so let's start off with the basics here. So I'm gonna move quickly through setting everything up. These are the initial steps. If anything's unfamiliar with you, and familiar to you, check out the previous tutorials on these specific topics, such as setting your working directory, reading data in, and so forth. So let's go to File, New File, R Script, open up a script editor or R Script file here. And I'm gonna do a quick save as here, just to make sure we save this as something. I'm gonna do override an existing file that's called tech test. It'll give me a warning here in a second. Yes, that's okay, I'm gonna override it. Okay, so the name, what we're doing here is writing data from R, from R. And so when you hear writing, think of exporting, just like with reading data into R is essentially importing data into R, writing data from R is like exporting data from R. So why might you do this? Well, let's say that you're working with some people that um, aren't familiar with R, don't know how to work in R, and you've been doing some data manipulation or management, and you wanna export or write the file into a format that they can open up in Microsoft Excel. Well, that might be one reason. Another reason might be that you plan to use another type of software package with the data, and so you wanna do your data management manipulation or what have you in R and then write it to a file that can be opened, and commonly CSV files can be opened in other statistical packages, for example. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is set our working directory. This is where the file is saved that we're gonna be working from today. So the file that I'm interested in working with is just the PERS data with a capital P and a capital D. This should be saved in the folder that you're gonna designate as your working directory folder here. This is my H drive. R workshop folder here with a capital R and a couple capital W. So I know that off the top of my head. So I'm going to do the set WD function from base R H drive colon forward slash R workshop capital R capital W here and click run. Okay. It was already set here, but we just made sure that that working directory was set for us. Alternatively, you could go to session set working directory and choose directory to do this manually through drop-down windows. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is read data in. And so I'm gonna first access the reader package. So this is the reader package that is part of the tidyverse set of packages. And this is reader, all lowercase without an E. So let's click run. So this reads in that package so we can ask, access functions from it. And specifically, we're gonna access the read underscore CSV function to read in the data. And so I'm gonna name these data PD. And so just capital P, capital D, because it's pers, pers data, which stands for personal data. And use the left-handed arrow notation to do that. And so, read underscore csv is the name of the function from the reader package that we're going to use and i'm in quotation marks going to type in the exact name of that file as it appears in our working directory which is pers data and then make sure you include the dot csv extension there and it's pers data with a capital p and a capital d and no spaces r is case and space sensitive so let's run that click on our global environment here on the name of this data frame object pd and you'll see we've read in the data, okay? So the next thing, let's do a quick, let's say change to the data, to the data frame called PD that we just named here. And specifically all we're gonna do is just, I just wanna do something that's gonna slightly tweak it so that we can write out data that's slightly different than the data frame that we actually read in. And so what I'm gonna do is let's check out the names of the variables that are in this data frame. So it's names PD. So names is the function from base R and PD is the argument we're entering, which is the name of the data frame. So click run. Okay, so here are the five variables, ID, last name, first name, start date, and gender. I want to copy the last name variable because I want to drop that from this data frame. So this is the quick change I'm going to do here just for demonstration purposes. 
So how do I designate that I wanna drop a variable and do that? Well, first I need to list the name of the data frame. So here it's PD. So I'm saying this is the name of the data frame and this is the variable within that data frame, last name, all lowercase here, no space. So I'm saying last name belongs to PD and the way I do that was with this dollar symbol here, okay? And now if I use that left-handed arrow and I type null, capital N-U-L-L -L, to the right of the arrow here, I'm saying get rid of this variable from this data frame. Get rid of that last name variable from the PD data frame. Okay, so let's go ahead and click run for that line. And let's type in names again and do PD, so the name of the data frame, so it should be updated now. So names PD as our argument within the names function, click run. And now you'll notice that we only have four variables, last name is gone. All right, so now let's write the data frame from R to a .csv file, okay? So the way that we're gonna do that is using a function that comes standard with base R that's called write.csv, okay? And as the first argument, we enter the name of the data frame that we've been working with in R that we're interested in writing to, um, this is gonna by default go to our working directory folder. Okay, so we've got PD, there's our first argument. Then in quotation marks, we need to come up with whatever, it's, this is going to be saved into our working directory folder. What do we wanna call this? I'm just gonna call this example. Um, actually, I'm gonna type it, it's something with an A, so let's say an example. So this way it'll appear alphabetically at the top of the list. It'll be easier to find in my working directory. And make sure that you include the .csv function to remind R that's what you're doing here, okay? And so this is all it takes. So go ahead and run this line of script here. Okay, so no error message down here. What happened? Well, we need to go to that working directory folder that we have. And here we go. At the top, we see a new data frame file or a new file, this .csv file that's called an, exa an example. Let's double click on that to open it up in Excel. And here we go. So we don't have that last name variable that we removed. And what you will notice is by default, R includes the unique row numbers here. And that's fine, you can delete these or keep them in. Um, it's just one way to, for R, in, this, in case you didn't have a unique identifier for each row, R by default provides you with row names there, okay? So that's how you do it. That's how you write a data frame from R to a .csv file, okay? Now, as I mentioned, this by default will save into your working directory folder. You could also specify the specific folder location if you have it. So like if I wanted to specify that, no, I want it to go to, let's say this is different from my working directory folder, which it's not, but let's pretend. Um, I wanted to go to a folder that's called R workshop in my H drive. Well, I could do this, okay? And write the actual extension there. All right, so what if we want to write data though from a table object, not a data frame object, but a table object, which is related, but can have some additional features. Um, we wanna write a table object to a .csv file, okay? So let's write data table from R to .csv. Well, first we need to create a data table, right? And so let's create a new data table. And so we need to come up a name, with a name for this data table ob object. I'm gonna do the super creative table underscore example, just off the top of my head. This is what I'm gonna call it. Name it using the left-handed arrow here. So this is what our new data frame object is going to be called. And now I use a slightly differently named function called from still from base R, but this one's called write.table. So write.table. And then as the first argument, I would put in, um, actually, sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself here. So I'm not quite there yet. I need to actually create this table first. So here I've named what this table is gonna be. I've done the left-handed arrow here. And now I'm gonna use the table function from base R. And the table function is just a quick way you can make a table. And the way that you, you, you write this function is you specify two variables that you want to cross in order to create the, the table, for example. And so as we did before, I need to say, okay, the first variable is from the PD data frame and use the dollar sign to then attach the second variable. 
And so let's say that the first variable is going to be, let's say um, it's going to be gender. And then the second variable, we'll do PD dollar sign to say that this second variable also belongs to that PD data frame that we created. Uh, this one's going to be start date. Okay, so we've got two variables that we're doing essentially a cross tabulation on. So in using the table function, okay? And we're gonna name this table underscore example. So let's click run there. You'll notice that we get uh, a table object created over here. And so watch what happens if we highlight just this, the table underscore example, the name of the table object we created and click run, we'll see a table here. So we can see we've crossed these that there is one male that had a start date on January 1st, 2016 and zero females that day and so forth and so on. Okay, now we're ready to actually use that write.table function. I was getting ahead of myself earlier and presented too early. So the name of the function is write.table and as the first argument, we're gonna enter the name of a table object. And in this case, we just created it. We called it table underscore example. As the second argument, so after the comma, we are going to type in the name. Um, let's call this a table example. And you could call this whatever you want before the period, but just make sure that you have period.csv or rather .csv or period CSV um, to designate that this is a CSV file, but you can make call it whatever you want before that, okay? The next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do another comma to separate out and say that I'm gonna add another argument. Uh, this line's getting a little bit long here. I'm gonna hit a return and notice this is fine. It works. You can write across multiple lines if you wish, as long as you, know, you have the closing parenthesis here, okay? And so the next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna type in an argument called sep equal sep equals. And after that, oops. After that, I'm gonna do the quotation marks and within the quotation marks, I'm gonna put a comma. What I'm saying is that these are going to be comma separated values because we're exporting it to a CSV, right? Okay, then I'm gonna do another comma after that argument. And so the fourth argument is gonna be call.names equal to NA. And so what this is doing is this is going to, this last argument ensures that our data are gonna be properly aligned, okay? that the row numbers, since we do have that first row that's going to, uh, that by default, as we saw with the write.csv, you get that first, or column rather, that has the row names or row numbers. Um, this is just keeping that first column blank and so forth. And so this way we can um, make sure that all the variable names are aligned with their proper data underneath them in columns, okay? So let's go ahead and highlight these two rows because we wrote this across two rows. We need to make sure that we highlight both of these rows and we can't just put our cursor here. Okay. All right, so we wrote that table. Now let's check out our working directory folder where by default it went. Here's that new one we just wrote, a table example here. Let's open it up. Might be a second. Okay, here we are, we wrote that to um, a table here. Or we wrote the table here to the um, uh, to the .csv file, okay? And I should note that uh, this call.names is important because it's saying, okay, we're not putting, there. there's no column names essentially that we're putting in other than these um, headers here for the table, okay? All right, so essentially, when you're writing using this, you just need to change these first two arguments. These second two arguments, you can keep the same. All right, well, this is going to finish up our tutorial on writing data from R to .csv files. Thank you very much.